Hello everyone, um, I am George from Ireland but this is going to be on my British Poesy channel. So I'm about to read a poem by uh, Shelley, um, the poet whom I utterly adore. And uh, this is a poem I haven't read since I was 17. Um, Shelley, uh, Keats and Lee Hunt got together, these three uh, most um, illustrious poets of, of, of the Romantic era, and they decided to have a competition to each compose a poem on the same topic. That was the Nile. It was a sonnet, a 14-line poem written to a very strict uh, metrical format, and they saw what they could come up with. I'm not sure if anyone adjudicated who was best, but I'm going to read all three. I've, I've read um, Lee Hunt's one the other day, and so here's going to be Shelley's one. So let you be the judge. Um, so this is To the Nile by Percy Bysshe Shelley. Month after month the rains descend, drenching yon secret Ethiopian dells, and from the desert's ice-skirt pinnacles, where frost and heat in strange embraces blend, on Atlas fields of moist snow half depend. Girt there with blasts and meteors, tempest dwells, by Nile's aerial urn with rapid spells, urging those waters to their mighty end. O'er Egypt's land of memory floods are level, and they are thine, O Nile, and that well thou knowest that soul-sustaining airs and blasts of evil, and fruits and poisons spring where'er thou flowest. Beware, O man, for knowledge must to thee, like the great flood to Egypt, ever be. So that's the poem, and uh, it's got an enigmatic ending. Um, when I first read it, I really hadn't anticipated that sting in the tale. It's almost an aphorism. So um, go over it. Month after month, gather rains descend. Okay, rains, drenching yon secret Ethiopian dells, dell being a valley. So there's the White Nile and the Blue Nile. Remember when they composed this about 1820, they didn't know where the source of the Nile was. Um, so the White Nile, no, sorry, the Blue Niles come from Egypt, but the White Nile, which is the real source of the Nile, is from Lake Victoria. So they might have thought it only came from Ethiopia, which part of it does. Of course, they meet at Khartoum, as in um, trunk in Arabic, elephant's trunk, um, the longest kiss in hi history, as Arabic poesy would have us believe that the two Niles meet and flow all the way to the Mediterranean. Um, from the desert's ice skirt pinnacles, well, they're, they're, there's ice, the Ethiopian mountains and melts there and obviously drains away through rills and rivulets and tributaries into the Nilus, where frost and heat in strange embraces blend. Well, that's true. We've got frost and obviously heat comes along and it melts it. So they're enmeshed on Atlas. Well, there's the Atlas Mountains in Morocco and then there's Atlas, that figure from, from, from Greek mythology who lends his name to those mountains. That's a very long way away from, from uh, uh, Egypt. But I wonder if his geography was shaky. Fields of moist snow half depend. All right. So there's snow on the mountainside. Girt there with blasts of meteors and tempest wells. Girt as in around like a belt, a girdle. So around the edge. So blasts as in very strong winds and meteors, tempests. Well, you know, like a shooting star, tempest of the capital T. I mean, it can mean a storm, perhaps a classical figure. Uh, mythological figure is supposed to be in charge of them by Nels dwells aerial urn so urn like a container some sort of vessel um, and rapid spells urging those waters to their mighty end so as though tempest um, by divination is controlling the the flow of the water because um, although he, he rejected the supernatural um, he was very much steeped in uh, classical mythology, so his poetry is quite atavistic. Um, and uh, perhaps so many people wouldn't realise that these are metaphors or mere whimsies by him. He didn't actually lend any credence to the notion that there was any higher power, divinity, um, intervening. He didn't think there was a, they had agency over human affairs or even existed. Um, not a theist, not a deist. And the necessity of atheism being the tract which had him sent down from University College Oxford. Um, urging those waters to their mighty end. So ordering the river to flow 
um, to, to the estuary and out into the sea. Uh, Egypt's land of memory floods are level. Land of memory, well, I, it's the ancient civilization, the, the most ancient in the world, with, with the, the writing almost as ancient as that of Iraq or uh, Babylonia. Oh, and they are mine, O Nile. So he's addressing the Nile, and well thou knowest. Well, who are you to be addressing the Nile saying this? So personification treated the Nile as though as though he or she were a person. That soul sustaining um, airs and blasts of evil. So, okay, wind sustains your soul. Well, spirit is spirit, and 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 air really are the same thing. Spirit and breath are the same etymologically linked. Perhaps that's why they're saying that. If you if you have no breath, you die. But then your soul's supposed to take wing, and blasts of evil. What are the blasts of evil? Is it a dangerous flood? Is it a wind that's too powerful? I'm unclear there. And fruits and poison spring where earth thou flowest. Okay, fruits grow, poisons too. Well, some of the flowers are poisonous. I'm not sure why he's saying poisons there. Perhaps the inundations can be dangerous. Um, beware, O man, for knowledge thou uh, that uh, knowledge must to thee, because man is always seeking knowledge. Is it particular seeking knowledge in Egypt? The savant going there to try and decipher the Rosetta Code, the Rosetta Stone, to crack the code of hieroglyphics, or um, dig up mummies and all the rest of it. Is that why he's saying that? Um, curiosity killed the cat, and um, uh, Egypt fascinated and beguiled the Occidental imagination at the time, um, like the great flood to Egypt ever be. So um, that it, it, it's a life-sustaining, yet it's hazardous. Is that it? We're, we're tempted to dangerous things because we've got this desire to know. There I'm trying to tease out meaning from his verse. Well, that's my penny's worth. Toodaloo.